What's up guys, this is Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys part two of the Arch install. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to do part two of the Arch install. In my last Arch video, I showed you guys how to install Arch but I didn't show the post installation configuration like setting up user accounts as well as a desktop environment and other things you can do to configure your system. Now it's impossible for me to configure the system tailored to everyone's taste, but I will show you guys how to set up the environment using the most popular Linux desktop environment, which is known currently. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video as I walk you through this process. So let's get started. During the install video, I didn't create any accounts on the system. So that will be the first step I'll do. So let's go down and log into our VM. And this is that same install that we did in the previous videos. So I'll link that video in the description below, as well as you may see a pop-up popping up on the screen. The only account on this system is the root account. So we have to log into that first. So let's type roots and the password. And if you've had the system sitting for a while, which I've been updating this system because I knew I was going to do this video. But if you had the system sitting, you know, for a while without doing anything to it, you want to obviously update the system first. So you can run Pacman dash SYU. And I'm pretty sure I updated this system not that long ago. So it shouldn't be any pack package update updates, especially since I don't have anything installed on the system yet. So now that we check for updates, let's go down and create that user account right fast. So I'm going to use the user add command. So that's user and then a d d. And then we're going to use the dash m option. And just to explain what the option is for dash m is to create a home directory. And that's the only option we have to use because I'm going to use the defaults for everything else. But if you want to like specify a group or something, you could type dash G and then the group as well as dash S that that's where you can specify the shell that you want this user to use when they log in. But I want to use the default, which is bash. So let's press enter there and it's going to use the defaults. So we created that user account. Now let's go on and put a password on that user account. So the command for that is P A S S W D and then the user account and press enter it's going to access for our password for that account so we can type in a password and now we get to go now in order for this new user to run commands as root we need to install and configure sudo and sudo basically stands for super user do so that allows you know you to run commands as if you were logged in as root. So let's go down and install that now and we can run pacman uh, dash s and then sudo and press enter. Press yes. This will install sudo for us. And then also let me run another command. I want to install uh, bash completion. And this is something you want to do kind of early. That way you can um, you can hit tab and it'll uh, finish out the command that you're trying to type out or the location, whatever. It's basically bash completion. So now let's clear this right fast. So I have both of those applications installed. Now the next thing we want to do is actually add that user to a group. And I'm showing you guys, you know, all this broken out so you can kind of follow along and do the exact same thing but we could have added this user to this group uh when i did user add but i just wanted to show you the commands so the way you add that user to a group is another command called g password or g p a s s w d and then you type uh dash a then the username and then we want to add this user to the will group now this will give us pseudo privileges by adding us to the real group because it's in the sudo config file and i'll show you how to modify that in a second so let's press enter there 
that'll add that user to the wheel group. So now let's go on and edit the sudo words file, which is located under etc. So you're really supposed to use by sudo, and that will basically open up that sudo words file under etc. And you can go in and, and edit it. But it uses vi. I'm not a fan of vi or vim. I know how to use it. I just don't use it that often. I feel more comfortable using nano. So I just go straight to the file. You, It's not recommended that you do this. But I've never had a problem just nano in that file. Uh, but nano etc. And then the sudo words file. And press enter. And then we just want to modify this file. If you go all, almost all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a spot that says un uncomment to allow members of group will to execute any command. So we, what we want to do is just uncomment that out. And then you can add all your users that you want sudo privileges to the will group. And it'll have access to use sudo to run elevated commands. So... Let's press Control X and type Y to o to right and press Enter and we're good to go. So if we clear this out, okay, cool. So now that we have that user account created, I'm gonna log out of Root and log in at, on the user account just to test that the user account works, as well as go on and install everything from that account. So let's go exit. And that'll log us out. So now we can log in as Josh, the new user account. And this will allow us to, you know, test if the pseudo privileges are working, as well as just verify that this account works. So let's go down and type in the password for that account. Press enter. Okay, so we're logged in. And let's clear. So the next step we want to do is go down and create or install a graphical environment. But there's one package that you need to install before you install that graphical environment. You need an X server. And so you have to install that package first. So if we go sudo pacman dash s capital S and then xorg dash server. And that's what we want to install and press enter. And this always pops up when you first use sudo under a, any account for the first time. And it's basically just saying, we trust you. We trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator. It's just a built-in statement that it puts on, on your account the first time you uh, run any command using sudo. Just to let you know that you have elevated privileges and you're being watched. Please don't do anything with these powers that you have. So <laughs> let's press enter. And go on and install this. So now we can install uh, X server. And it's a lot of packages. It won't take too long. But I'll go down and speed past this so you guys can don't have to wait for this install. Okay, so it was quicker than I thought. But we have X server on here now. So now we can install a graphical environment. And for this demonstration, I want to go down and install GNOME because it's the simplest. It already has a display manager included, which is GDM and basically stands for a GNOME desktop manager or display manager. So let's go on and install that right now. So the command to do that is using Pac-Man. And I just press that up arrow and then we want to install GNOME. And this is a group package. So it'll it it has a whole bunch of packages that are grouped together to form this main package called GNOME. So it'll recognize that it's a group package and it'll install all the packages that are within that group. Just like when we installed the base packages when we did the main install. Now GNOME also has what they call GNOME extras. And this is another group that you want to install. This will have a whole lot of extra packages that are normally used or normally installed so I'm going to just install it just to make sure we have everything. So when we bring up the desktop environment, you can see a fully functioning GNOME desktop. So let's press enter on this and we'll go through and do the install. And it's pretty simple. Uh, I normally hit the defaults for everything. So we just going to hit enter on all this stuff. Now, here is something you have to, you know, kind of look at. This right here acts as for repository X extra. Uh, one jack 
or Jack 2, which is community. I always just go with the default, so I'm going to go with default there. And there are two providers. Uh, you can get the GTK uh, desktop or KDE desktop uh, XDG package. So I'm going to just use the GTK, which is fine. And if you want to change this up, you're more than welcome to. But uh, I just typically go with the GNU free funds, which is uh, the default. And then we can press Y and enter. And this will proceed with the install. And I'll, I'll just let this run so you guys can watch and see what happens. Okay, so we have our user account created with pseudo privileges, and we have our desktop environment installed and set up. But before we reboot the system, we have to actually start the desktop manager or display manager. And the command to do that is simply sudo uh, systemctl uh, enable and it's gdm.service, and that's the GNOME display manager. So type in our password, press enter, and that'll allow the display manager to store it up when we reboot the system. So now we can reboot the system. So if we type sudo shutdown uh, dash r now, that'll reboot the system for us. So press enter, just wait for the system to come back up. And we should be greeted with our display manager. And it may take a second because it's the first time booting up into it. So let's just keep waiting. And cool. So that's our display manager that's installed. Uh, so let's go down and log into our account. And just test out the system. Make sure it's good to go. I can kind of show you what's already installed on the system. Uh, it should come with a lot of, you know, known packages that, you know, or specific to gnome so as you see it's got the dock or whatever uh, you can go through and look at all the applications you can search through and see what it has you know it has all the gnome based packages i'm pretty sure like like evolution i was looking up thunderbird because i use thunderbird but uh evolution is installed pretty much all the known packages are installed on here so um and just to open it up and it may not open up the terminal because this is a bug that i've seen in the past when installing gnome on orch for some reason the terminal won't work but the way to fix that if you ever run into that issue, you just go into the system settings and let's just type settings and that way it'll come up. Yeah, there we go. Settings. So go into settings. And if we scroll down into settings to region and language, for some reason it throws out the language. So you just have to go in here and select it. And it's going to require a restart of the session. So we can just log out. And then log back in. And the terminal should open up at this point. Let's give it a second for it to come back in. Yeah. I don't know why that bug is there. It may be some dealing with VirtualBox because um, I was thinking about doing another video. So I cloned this VM. 
Uh, so I can show you show you guys how to install KDE. So I might do another video on that. And since we got a working desktop, let's go down and uh, do some updates right fast. So we something just to show you guys that you know the system is working. Uh, and we might have some updates because nah, we don't. So we good to go. And just go to you name. Type that in right fast. Uh, and just to show you, you know, Orch. And now you can go through and just set up your desktop on your system. You know, make it look how you want it to look. I'm not sure what all it comes with as far as backgrounds and everything. Because I haven't used GNOME in a while. I don't really like these colors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you can go through. They have a lot of cool, you know, stuff. And right now I'm not going to really mess with the... Oh, that's tight. I like that blue. I'm a I'm a fan of blue. So, and I didn't mean to do that. Let's go cancel. I like that blue. So, let's go down and close this and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's so that's cool right there. So I roll with something like that, and then you can go through. You know, go to like a uh, gnome look and install like uh, some themes or window themes. You know, all that good stuff, and go through and set up that stuff for yourself. You know, however you want to, because it comes with, you know, pretty much the default. And right now it kind of looks weird because I didn't adjust the display, uh, which I'm probably not going to do. I may have to install uh, the guest editions. Uh, well, no, it's working. So I should be able to, you know, make the screen bigger, but I'm not going to do it because I got this thing set up for OBS uh, and I know it's going to screw it up soon as I make the screen bigger but um, but that's pretty much it man I hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it techy